Welcome to the ST Microelectronics video about the STM32 Cube Monitor Power Tools addressed to STM32 microcontrollers users. In this video, I present different topics to explain how to use STM32 Cube Monitor Power Tools. STM32 Cube Monitor Power is a software tool developed by ST to help developers to analyze the low power performance of their target board. It can acquire power measurements through an expansion board X Nucleo LPM01A or the energy meter STM32L5 Discovery Kit and display this measurement using an intuitive graphical interface. It can execute a EEMBC ULP bench test to directly provide a ULP mark score with accuracy. And of course, STM32 Cube Monitor Power can be installed on MultiPOS as Windows, Linux, and macOS. STM32 Cube Monitor Power software runs on your host machine, displaying graphically the dynamic power consumption of your application. It interfaces with the hardware power shield board, like X Nucleo LPM01A expansion board of the STM32L5 Discovery Kit to acquire dynamically the power consumption. For installing the STM32 Cumometer Power Tools, you will find all documentation on the ST website, as user manual, with all information on it. X-Nucleo LPM01A Power Shield K feature. With this power shield, it's possible to supply power source between 1.8V to 3.3V. Power Shield measures the dynamic current on a range from 100 nanoamps to 50 milliamps and measures the static current up to 200 milliamps. Power Shield operates either in standalone using its LCD, jot kit, and button to display static measurement, or in control mode connected to a host PC via USB on using the STM32 Cube Monitor Power Software Tools with its graphical interface. It's also possible to trigger signal on both Arduino Nano and Arduino Uno. One trigger signal from the target board to the shield, and two trigger signal from the shield to the target board. Nucleo Evaluation Board can be connected directly to the power shield by the Arduino connector. In this case, the power shield supply and measure current by the pin 3.3V ARD or by the pin ARF ARD. But it's also possible to power supply and measure consumption of another target connected by wire via the basic connector on the power shield. Go to the ST website to get all documentation on this power shield, a user manual, a presentation document, and a getting started video. As well, go to the ST website to get the latest firmware embedded in the Nucleo power shield on the user manual corresponding. I recommend you refer user manual to upgrade the firmware embedded. The STM32L5 Discovery Kit has a circuit to measure the STM32L562 microcontroller current consumption IDD within a range of 300 nanoamps to 150 milliamps with a dedicated USB interface. It has the same features as PowerShield standalone board except that the STM32L5 Discovery Board must be used in host mode with computer through USB interface. Moreover, the acquisition mode static is not available. Only dynamic mode with STM32 Cube Monitor Power Tools with its graphical user interface is possible. Go to the ST website to see documentation as the user's manual and get the power firmware embedded in STM32L5 Discovery Kit which is the same as the power shield ICE Nucleo LPM01A. As well, refer to the user manual for upgrade the firmware in this board. I propose to show an example of consumption measurement with STM32 Cube Monitor Power Software Tools using a Nucleo U5 on the ICE Nucleo Power Shield. 
For that, we will use the example RTC Low Power Standby Wake Up Timer available in the firmware use file. So you can take a look on the different documentation on the ST website as a Nucleo U5 user manual on schematic. In the RTC Low Power Standby Wake Up Timer example, after an initialization, MCU enter in standby mode for 3 seconds. RTC being configured to wake up the MCU every 3 seconds, then MCU enter again in standby mode. After 5 cycles of wake up, so 15 seconds, the program gets the time by the RTC and check if time equal to 15 seconds. At this time, test is finished and the MCU stays in run mode. A LED blinked at each wake up during two times and stayed in state on at the end of the test. If an error occurs, a red LED is set during the test. You can see more detail in the readme file. Several configurations are possible to power the Nucleo U5 by the power shield. In this first configuration, Nucleo board is connected on the power shield by the Arduino connectors. The power shield supply the Nucleo board by the 3.3 volt pin 7 on the Arduino connector CN8, as shown on the extract schematic. On the Nucleo board, a solder bridge SB1 is used to disconnect the LDO output when an external 3.3 volt is applied to the Nucleo board. So in this case, SB1 must be open to avoid conflict with the LDO, normally closed by default. Jumper 4 on nuclear board must be closed between pin 1 and pin 2 to propagate the 3.3 volt to VDD, as well for the jumper 5 to propagate the VDD to the VDD MCU. Beware that the current measured concern all feature 3.3 volt and not only microcontroller current consumption. On the power shield, Jumper 3 select the configuration of a supply source. In this configuration, power shield is supplied by the 5 volt USB cable from the PC connected to USB connector C in 5. Jumper 9 on 10 configure the power supply to the nucleo to deliver power supply on 3.3 volt Arduino pin. Jumper 10 must be closed. Jumper 1 must be configured in normal mode. On Jumper 4, let additional capacitor on 3.3 volt, which improve the stability of the supply voltage. On the switch S3, must be put on flash. For more detail on the jumper configuration, take a look on PowerShield on Nucleo user manual. In this second configuration, the Nucleo board is connected to the power shield by the Arduino connector, and the power shield delivers the supply voltage to the Nucleo board by the RF signals on the pin 6 on the CN7 Arduino connector on the Nucleo board, as you can see in the extract schematic of Nucleo board. The solder bridge 20 open by default must be closed to propagate VRF to the VDD MCU by the solder bridge SB3, which is closed by default. The jumper 5 must be open. And concerning the configuration of power shield, the jumper GP10 must be open. GP9 must be closed. And for GP1, GP4, GP3 on the switch S3, it is exactly the same configuration as already explained in the configuration one. In this first configuration, Nucleo board is not directly plugged on the power shield. The power shield supplies the Nucleo board by the CN14 connector. On Nucleo board, jumper 5 must be open and VDD MCU must be connected to VDD on the connector on the power shield and as well for the GND. 
In this case, power shield supply only the VDD MCU. So only MCU consumption will be measured by the power shield. Jumper GP10 and GP9 are not concerning on this config and can be open. For jumper GP1, GP4 and GP3 and also the switch S3, it is the same configuration as already explained in the previous type config1 and config2. At this step, it's time to show you an example using STM32 Cube Monitor Power Tools. For that, we use the STM32 Cube ID to compile and download the code in the Nucleo board with a power shield ISC Nucleo LPM01A. After launch the STM32 Cube ID tools, select the STM32 project, then select Example Selector. Okay. You can see a list of the tests. So type the name of the test RTC Low Power Standby Wake Up Timer. Click on STM32 U5. Select the example and click on Next. You can change the default location and select another directory. Click on Finish and the example is imported in the STM32 Cube ID. OK, so you can compile and download the binary file in the Nucleo board. Just select project. Okay. You can select the configuration of debugger. And the binary file is downloaded in the nuclear board. So not necessary to launch the debugger. Okay. So now you can put the nuclear board on the power shield. So, before launch the STM32 Cube Monitor Power Tools, configure your board as the configuration one as already explained in the previous slide. So now you can start the STM32 Cube Monitor Power Tools to connect to the Power Shield Select Board. OK. Click on Tech Control. You can see different configuration. The sampling frequency time from 1 Hz to 100 kHz. So for my example, I select 100 Hz. You can select an acquisition time from 0.1 to 100 seconds or an infinity mode. So I select 100 seconds. You can also select a threshold current to generate a trigger from the power shield to the nuclear board, but it's not used in, uh, in your example. You can select also a trigger source, so software, when you click to the start acquisition, or by a trigger from the nucleo to the power shield by the signal D7. So it's not used in your example, so I select software. You can also select a trigger delay between the trigger and the acquisition. And you can select also the input voltage from 1.8 volt to 3.3 volts. So in your case, I select 3.3 volts. You can make a calibration of the power shield. And you can also reset the target by the NRST pin. And you can also get the temperature by a sensor on the power shield. So now I can start an acquisition. So you can see the trace on the different phase standby mode on wake up. OK. So the test is finished. I can stop the acquisition. 
and show all the traces. OK. On this trace, you can show a report with a mean, max, and average current, and also the energy. You can select just a part of this trace, for example, the search current on the standby mode. OK. And in the selected time frame, you can see also the mean, max, and average current. So you can return to the old trace. Okay, so you can analyze the current consumption of this example. You can see the current consumption during the blink inlet, for example, and during the standby. As you can see, during the standby, the current consumption is 2.5 milliamps. So it is not only the current consumption from the microcontroller, but the current consumption on the 3.3 volt. So you can of course save a graph okay, in your PC. And you can also move the axis. Okay. So you can move to see uh, more detail. Okay. And you can also move the ordinate axis. So you can, for example, change the scale of the ordinate. You can so use a dynamic range. I propose to continue with this configuration too where the power supply the nuclear bore by the pin VREF and in this case only the VDD MCU current is measured. So after configured the nuclear board on the power shield you can start a new acquisition. Okay, so the test is finished. I can stop the acquisition and show all the trace. This diagram is very similar to the previous configuration. Just to compare the power consumption on standby mode is very low. And in the run mode after wake up, you can see that the consumption of the blinking LED is normal because the LED is connected directly to the 3.3 volt. And in this case, we measure only the current on the MCU VDD. Now, I propose to finish this demonstration by last free configuration, where the power supply of the nuclear board with wires connected directly on VDD MCU. So after configure the power shield and connect it to the nuclear board, you can start a new acquisition. So the test is finished. I can stop the acquisition and then show all the trace. So as you can see, it's very similar to the previous configuration. It's normal because in this case, you measure only the MCU current consumption. To conclude this presentation, two slides to summarize the results on an example of trace analysis for the hardware configuration one, and also for the configuration 2 and 3, very similar. So this is the end of the presentation. Thank you for your attention.